Hello everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. I've been off YouTube for a little while, that was not planned, it was just life stuff happened. If you follow me on Patreon, by the way, if you want to support me on Patreon, the link is always down below. Uh, if you are one of my patrons, you know what happened and where I was and why I just disappeared off the internet. Um, but I promised that I would make another Q&A about island life. I actually wanted to film it outside, but I don't know if you can even hear it. Maybe you can. It is extremely windy today. Um, and so I'm not going to be filming outside because you will not understand a word I say. And since I already was sitting on my desk because I was filming my next Skillshare class, I uh, thought, why not just film the Q&A here. <laughs> Most of these questions do come from my patrons, but I've also asked around here on YouTube. If you have more questions for future Q&As, always just leave them in the comment section of my YouTube videos, specifically under this one, of course, or become one of my patrons and ask me there. And if you're completely new here, <laughs> hi, my name is Tasman. I'm originally from Germany, but I moved to the Azores, specifically to Pico Island. This is a volcanic island archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It belongs to Portugal, but is an autonomous region. And it is very isolated. And I live on the beautiful island of Pico since, uh, yeah, more than five, five to six years, depending on when you start counting already. So it's been a while. And I do make YouTube videos here about my life. I'm an author, I'm a writer, I'm a reader. So I talk about books and writing, but I also just talk about island life and share impressions from this beautiful, beautiful place in the middle of the ocean. And uh, usually most questions are about the island because that's what a lot of people are interested in. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, my career as an author today. The first question is, how are you acquiring different plants for the garden? And how is the access like on Pico? Are you able to buy fruit trees? How is access to seeds or seedlings? Are you buying plants, getting cuttings from friends, seed saving, etc.? Is there a garden store on Pico? Yes, there is a garden store. There's actually more than one garden store, but it's not necessarily how you would think of. <laughs> like as someone, again, who comes from Germany, and I believe it's probably similar maybe in the US, like garden stores there are these very organized things where you can buy all these beautiful flowers and whatever. Um, it's not necessarily like that here. They're a little bit more chaotic. <laughs> I want to say, um, but there are a few, they're like very small stores um, and you can order trees, but only in the winter time. You cannot order trees in the summertime because of like planting seasons and stuff. Um, and you don't necessarily get, like you don't have like a catalog where you can say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. You just have to go and say, I want a pear tree. And then you actually need to wait and you don't know if you will actually receive the pear tree. That's how it's been with us. We've been waiting for a pear tree for like two years now. Um, if anybody on Pico has a pear tree, please let me know. <laughs> I really want a pear tree. Um, <laughs> so it is a little bit chaotic. There is one that also like grows a lot of trees himself. So it's like you need to know the places and you need to know the people. And there is, of course, a lot of people that also grow fruit privately and then you can get like cuttings or small baby trees or whatever. For example, our banana plants are from someone that we know. We didn't buy those. We got them for free from someone that just has a lot of bananas. Um, and seeds you can actually buy in the supermarket, like the regular, regular seeds. And uh, sometimes you, if you want something more exotic, you either ask around if somebody has it or you order it online. So that's kind of the seed plant situation. It's a little bit more uncomfortable than just walking into a huge, beautifully, perfectly organized garden center, but it still works. It still works uh, just, just fine. I would like to ask if you have experience with growing fruit, what works well in the Azores? Pineapples and greenhouse, that's well known. I grow avocados in Spain and I think the Azores have an ideal climate for avocados. Wind is a bit of a problem, but avocados grow quickly and soon mend after a storm. Also, passion fruit or guava should do well. I have been to the Azores and have not seen this fruit. You have lived there a long time. Do you have any experience? I love this question because I love fruits. <laughs> we are personally not super successful yet because our piece of land is very exposed to wind from all sides and we do have very, very strong storms in the winter. So it's very hard for trees to get established if you don't have wind protection. 
but there are countless areas here where you do have a bit more protected areas uh, where people are really, really successful in growing all kinds of fruit. What we cannot grow are fruits that are uh, that need like a very strong cold period. So for example, blueberries is difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. It depends a little bit on the variety really of certain things. Also apples is sometimes a bit complicated because they also need a colder period. Again, depends on the variety, but we are, we are a very specific climate. I will put it on the screen. I forgot the exact name of the climate zone that we are in. And this is Azores specific. And then on each island, you have a hundred different climate zones, depending on the geographical formation and the type of lava soil. And it's just each and every piece of land is completely unique here. So that makes it sometimes a little bit difficult because you don't really know what you can grow until you've tried. <laughs> That's kind of like the biggest piece of advice. But in theory, we are very close to a subtropical climate in a lot of places. Again, our land is a bit different because of the wind exposure um, and the closeness to the ocean. But there's bananas. It's very, very, very popular. Banana trees are everywhere. Pineapples, not only in greenhouses, that's just for the big production, you can also grow pineapples just on your regular, regular land. Guava is very popular, uh, but specifically Arasa, I will leave a link to a video I made about Arasa already. Uh, it's one of my favorite fruits. We actually have a lot of ripe ones right now. I think maybe after this video I'm gonna go upstairs and get some because we have some bushes upstairs. Um, and so specifically, um, Arasa, they're basically tiny baby guava. They're like this big or even smaller. Um, and they can be very sour. They can be very sweet. You, we have yellow ones and red ones. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the video for that. Um, there are experiments to try and grow coffee, uh, and things like cacao, but they're not really succeeding here on Pico. But for example, the island of Sao Jorge, uh, one of our neighboring islands has one specific area on the island that can grow co coffee and that does grow coffee. But it's only there. It's like this tiny little village. And so, yeah, it really, really depends on where you are and how your land is shaped. Um, as long as your plants can withstand wind and a lot of rain in the winter, you're good to go. Uh, our winters just don't get really super, super cold. They just get very stormy. So if that helps i hope it helps so we can grow tropical food mangoes maracuja uh, passion fruit. <laughs> passion fruit <laughs> passion fruit also definitely grows here we had some of those this year in our garden already so i think i think you're pretty good to go you just need to really pay attention how your land looks like that you're growing on there's quite a well-known video about the azores that we watched it mentioned a cat tax on the azores have you found this to be true thanks i love your channel Thank you so much. Uh, if you didn't know, we have recently adopted, well, recently, I'd say almost a year ago, we adopted two baby cats. Uh, we've taken care of a stray cat. She gave birth to five babies. We kept two of them and she, the mama is still around as well. Um, and no, there is no such thing as a cat tax. I went out of my way to confirm this because I started to get worried after reading this comment. I was like, oh my God, did we need to pay a cat tax <laughs> and we didn't know. Uh, no, that is not the case. There is no such thing as a cat tax on the Azores um, or in Portugal for that matter. What you do need to do, where you probably got that from, I don't know the video you're referring to. I I haven't seen it. I don't know what you're talking, like which video you're talking about. But what I believe these people were referring to is that if you bring a pet from outside the EU, for example, if you migrate from the US to the Azores, then you need to pay a fee to get your pet from another state into Portugal and get it registered here, etc. So you need to pay a fee. You do not need to pay a tax because a tax is something that you pay over and over again. That's not the case. There's also, as far as I know, not a dog tax on the Azores, which is a thing in Germany. You have to pay taxes for your dog but you also don't have to pay taxes for your dog here either. So no, that's, that's not true. Do you write more than one book simultaneously? This refers to me being an author and me writing a lot. <laughs> and uh, yes and no, 
kind of. I do always have multiple ideas in my head. So in my head, I'm always working on multiple books. And in the last few years, I've always worked on my memoir and a fiction work almost parallel. So I, so kind of, yes, but not in the same day. I can absolutely not switch that much in my head. So I do tend to hyper-focus on one thing for a certain period of time but I can eventually switch to something else even when the other thing is not finished, if that makes sense. So I've been writing my memoir. I've also been writing on my nature fantasy cli-fi crossover, <laughs> which is in English and my memoir is in German. So I even had like a language crossover there. But right now, for example, I'm pausing the memoir because it is potentially with a literary agent right now. We're gonna talk about that in the future. Um, he, um <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, now I can focus back on the English fantasy book because I'm pausing on the other one. So I hope that explains it badly, but I hope it explains it somehow. Is the writing style you're employing now different than what you utilized for your first book? Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God, I have grown so, so much as a writer. In fact, I've just, as I said, I've just recorded a new writing Skillshare class. If you didn't know, I give Skillshare classes on writing. If you want to check them out, the link is down below. Um, and if you're one of my patrons, you have free access to those writing classes if you're on the higher tiers of my Patreon. Um, and this new class is coming out very soon. Um, and I've changed so much as a writer, uh, but more like the mindset about it uh like i do also of course like write differently now i think that just comes with experience and age uh and just like practicing writing over and over again and reading more exposing yourself more but also my mindset like i was i feel like i was really entitled when i first started writing because i thought i could write anything and everything and like you know full-on white savior mode um and now i do no longer believe that <laughs> I think I'm a bit more humble now and I've also learned to let go of certain things like I for example my memoir I edited down hard I deleted so much because I realized it's not about me always <laughs> which is a funny thing to say about a memoir but it is simply true that you need to write for the reader and you need to write to convey a certain message. Like, or at least I do. I want to convey certain messages. I have certain beliefs and values that I want to pass on. I want to leave the reader with a good feeling. I want to leave the reader with hope and with an understanding of whatever it is I want to tell. Um, and I really want to immerse the reader. And in order to do that, I have to sometimes like hold myself back and edit myself down and uh, be a little bit more harsh with myself sometimes. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like the topics I write about are now very, very different and my aspirations have changed a lot. So yes, I've definitely changed. And I've just learned a lot more about writing in general. And the last question, you've said that you were learning Portuguese. How has your language learning been coming along? And have you been able to communicate well in Pico through German and English? Um. <laughs> I'm very embarrassed to say that my Portuguese is not as good as I would like it to be. Eu falo um bocadinho, mas só um bocadinho. Eu aprendo, mas muito devagar. De, well, as you can see. Uh, I'm learning, but slowly, uh, because there are language courses here, even for free, but with the chaos that my life has been in the last few years, there was a lot of hardship, a lot of stuff that I did not share on YouTube. And the last like five years of my life have been incredibly chaotic and incredibly painful and intense uh, on a lot of areas in my life. And I honestly just did not have the capacity to learn a full new language. Learning languages is very hard for me. It's not very easy. English came to me easy, but I studied French in school, Italian and Urdu. Um, and I, none of that stuck <laughs> because I just have a hard time with languages and Portuguese is no different for me at this point. Um, and so it, it is hard for me. It takes a lot of my energy to actually sit down and learn it. 
Uh, and I just didn't have that in the last few years. And I couldn't access the courses because they were like in the evenings, far away. I don't have a car, et cetera, et cetera. I probably would have found a way if I really, really wanted to, but I didn't want to <laughs> because I was just done and I didn't have capacity. Um, but I am learning a lot with my neighbors because the, the, where we live, our neighbors do not speak any English whatsoever. Uh, so I do have to communicate in Portuguese and that's the best teacher, a neighbor who just wants to talk to you. Like that's the best possible teacher. I'll, also our contractor that we were working with for the last few years didn't speak English. Um, so that's a thing. However, the younger generation, people more or less my age, they all speak English and a lot of older ones actually also speak English, especially because like the senior ones that came back for retirement are often people that lived in the US and Canada all their lives. So they, of course, speak perfect English. Um, and there's a lot of foreigners here, too, from all over the world. A lot of Germans on Pico, which I don't engage with as much. But um, yeah, like I perfectly can survive in English, but I am also very glad that I do have a Portuguese partner who can help me, help me out whenever I whenever English is not available. So uh, it's kind of a mix. You can definitely survive here without Portuguese. I know plenty of foreigners who never made an effort to learn any Portuguese and even some foreigners who don't even speak English. I don't know how that works, but um, like there's people that are here and they don't speak the language and they sometimes lived here for 20, 30 years and they're fine. Uh, but of course you will never connect to the people around you uh, that actually are from here and to the culture here if you don't at least try to learn the language. So it is actually one of my goals to learn more of the language moving forward as hopefully things are going to slow down <laughs> and I can finally do that because it's been a huge goal of mine. Okay, that was a little quick rapid fire Q&A. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.